الحمد للہ الحمد للہ نحمد ہو و نستعین ہو و نستغ فر ہو و نؤمن بہی و نتوکل علی و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من یحده اللہ فلا مضل و من یلله فلا حادی علی و نشد و لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریق علی و نشد ان سیدنا و سندنا و شفیعنا محمد عبده و رسوله اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ فَقَالُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي آیتٍ اُخْرَى اِنَّ أَوَّلَ بَيْتٍ وَذِيَ لِلنَّاسِ لَلَّذِي بِبَكَّةَ مُبَارَكًا وَقَالُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي آیتٍ اُخْرَى جَعَلُ اللَّهُ الْقَعْبَةَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامَ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ صدق اللہ العظیم اللہم صلی و سلم و بارک و رحم علی عبدک و رسولک سیدنا محمد النبی الامی و علی آلہ و صحبہ اجمعین کما صلیت و بارکت علی ابراہیم و علی آل ابراہیم انکا حمید و مجید So what I had in mind for these five Ramadan reflections was to take the four other pillars of Islam and so the first day we did Salah and I talked about Surah Al-Fatiha, actually, as a glimpse into the pillar of Salah. Yesterday I talked about the signs of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a glimpse into the pillar of Iman. And today I wanted to offer some reflections on the Kaaba and the Rodha, inshallah, as some reflection into the pillar of Hajj. And the next two sessions, one of them will be on some reflections related to the pillar of Zakat. And the other one will be on, so that covers the five pillars, because four plus one, we are already doing the pillar of fasting, and we've already spoken about that. So I will talk about, inshallah, akhlaq and mu'amalat, so our character in our relations with one another, and mu'ashara, and our character in terms of our role in society building. So for today, inshallah, about the Kaaba and the Rodha. So when I was looking at these verses about the Kaaba, I noticed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these three verses that I recited to you mentions His creation of the Kaaba, Linnas. Right? So the first verse was, Inna awala baytin wudhi linnasi lalladhi bibakkata mubaraka. That indeed the very first bait, and here bait means house of worship, right? Place of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That has been established by Allah subhanahu wa Linnas for all of humanity is the one that was at Bakka. Bakka was the pre-Islamic name for Makkah Makarama. And you have then Allah Ta'ala describing that place of Makkah Makarama as Mubarak, as blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Wahudal I think it continues actually, and also as a guidance, uh, as a source of hidayah. And the other verse, uh, Allah SWT mentions Qiyamun Linnas. So the bait itself is established. It will always be there for all of humanity. All right. So, when you think about this, Ramadan is a special time. And Makkah Makarma, and we're going to come to it in a bit, Medina Manawra, in particular, the Rodha Sharif is a special space. So, this is another wondrous aspect of our deen, the deen of Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a special time and a special space. Allah ta'ala has blessed us with special times the month of Ramadan, the days of Zul Hijjah, every day and night of Jum'ah. Etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with special spaces, special places, makan, such as Makkah Mukarama, the Rodha at Medina Munawwara, and Baytul Muqaddas, or some like to prefer to call it Baytul Muqaddas, Qud uh, Sharif, Jerusalem. Right? And this is also, and these are the two master creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a sense, or not, not master, but these are the two sort of most primary or essential creations of Allah SWT, time and space. And within that, He has placed baraka, mubarak times, and baraka in mubarak spaces. Now, 
one, I think ma- many of you would be aware of this hadith that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, actually has a hadith which combines uh, the month of Ramadan, the special time of the month of Quran, the month of fasting, the month of Allah's mercy, and the space of Kaaba and performing Umrah, the lesser pilgrimage to the Kaaba. And Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that somebody who performs Umrah in the month of Ramadan, it is as if they have done Hajj with Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Now if you think about that, uh, this is an incredible reward. And Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to Hajj. Uh, and in some narrations, Umrah in Ramadan is like performing Hajj with Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So that is the notion of joining this special time and this special space in this special action, which is the, uh, which is Umrah. I want you to think about this, that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam obviously knew that uh, there would be in the Ummah, the overwhelming majority of people in the Ummah will not be Sahaba, right? Just so you know, by the way, this is Hadith in Bukhari, Sahih of Bukhari, all right? Uh, so this is not some story or some tale, uh, but Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu is narrated as saying that performing Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to Hajj or equivalent to performing Hajj with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All right. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that the vast majority of the Ummah would not be able to f- perform Hajj with him. And in fact, uh, to be honest, not every, to be accurate, not every Sahabi performed the Hajj with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But by, be, by teaching us, and Allah Ta'ala is somebody, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is the being who revealed this. This is not coming from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself. Rasulullah Sallallahu himself cannot create the thawab of these acts. This is actually a mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu shared by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with us. All right. So one can, you know, I w- it would have been enough to even say Umrah. Would they, it would have been enough to say anything. With the, one tawaf with the Prophet ﷺ. One glance at the Kaaba with Rasulullah ﷺ. But Allah SWT magnified it to such a level. The act is of Umrah. The reward is being given of Hajj. The act is being performed alone. The reward is being given as if it was performed with the greatest of all of creation, the greatest prophet, the greatest human being, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. What's the difference? What's the factor in all this Ramadan? That's the factor in all of this. The fact that the Umrah is performed in Ramadan. So I want you to think, and this is why I'm linking these pillars, this hadith itself is actually teaching us the azmat, the incredible nature of Ramadan. I think oftentimes this hadith, and I must have oftentimes left it out also, is left out in our presentations about the virtues and benefits of Ramadan. Now, you know, because of the unfortunate state of the world, uh, you know, very, very few people will be able to perform Umrah this year in Ramadan. But it makes me think, right? So let's extrapolate. Let me re, let me sort of translate this hadith in general language. A small act that is performed in Ramadan is equivalent to a big act performed with Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Now it's not actually true. We cannot extrapolate and create a rule out of this. The Hadith can only be understood to apply specifically to the act mentioned in Hadith, which is the Umrah. All right? But it still does give me a feeling generally of how acts in Ramadan are magnified tremendously by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not just the month of Ramadan, so let's go back to the other pillar, it's also the barakah of the fact that Allah ta'ala has placed a bait, a place of worship. And that is the place of worship that we honor 
five times a day because that is the jihad of our qibla. That is the direction in which we face when we pray our salah. Right? See, all these pillars you can see are interrelated to one another. So even if me and you don't go to Kaaba every day, we pray towards Kaaba every day in honor of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent on that space, on that place, on that bait. So this deen, alhamdulillah, is very, every aspect of it is deeply interrelated, deeply interconnected. Alhamdulillah, you know, I was lucky, uh, blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fortunate enough by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, Give me and everyone tawfiq to do qadr and truly value and appreciate all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So the first umrah of my life actually was in Ramadan. And this was in the year, now see I'm getting old, I have to remember the year 2000, uh, 2002, in the year 2002. Yeah, I want to say it's December 2001, January 2002, or either it was December 2002, January 2001, uh, January, slash January 2003. Yes, it was December 2002, slash January 2003, if I'm correct. No, December 2003. December 2003. Here, that doesn't matter. So the first Umrah... We made, alhamdulillah, was in the month of Ramadan. And if it is December 2003, then I was 30 years old at that time. And it had been my dream to go on Umrah probably from the age of 22, 23. It's only that late because I did not actually really know anything about Islam until I was 20 or 21. And I didn't actually learn about uh, Umrah until I was probably 21 or 22. So... Uh, one of the things that was, uh, I, I actually ended up going to Medina Manawara first on that Umrah. Uh, and that was also very special for me because that was the year I had completed what in our studies in the South Asian subcontinent, Darlum Madaris Islamic Seminary uh, terminology we call Dora Hadith. So that was the year that you spend the entire year only and only studying Hadith day and night. And then after that year completed, and that's why I'm remembering now that this was actually, uh, now I can tell you definitively. So it was December 2002, because 2002 is the year I did Dora Hadith. Uh, and I landed in Medina Manora. And, you know, I, alhamdulillah, I did spend a lot of time in Masjid Nabi, but I used to spend a lot of time walking around Medina Manora and walking to Masjid Kuba and thinking of all these Hadith and stories and imagining things. And one of the things I had done in my life at that point deliberately I had never ever seen a picture of Medina Manawara or Masjid Nabui or the, you know, I want to say I never saw a picture of the Green Dome, but probably it must have passed my eyes. Uh, so it was a very, you know, new experience for me. And I think that's very different for people who go on this month in times like today where it is good, but people are, you know, seeing so many YouTube videos of Medina Manawara and Masjid Nabui. Khair. So I went to Medina Manawara first. Although I do think that generally, you know, not I'm not giving a ruling, legal ruling here, but I personally view it to be preferable to go to Makkah Makarama first uh, so that one can do Umrah and cleanse oneself through the act of Tawaf and clinging to Multazim and making Istighfar, making Tawbah, and one can re-establish their connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then present oneself in Medina Manawra at the Rawd sharif in front of uh, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa enter his presence because we are always in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who amakum in amakuntum it is only when you stand at the rawdha at in Masjid Nabwe in Medina Manawra that is a unique moment in your life that you are in the presence of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so going to Makkah Makarama first and making that tawbah and re-establishing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a very good I personally view it for myself to be necessary, a very good way to prepare for entering the presence of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam in Medina Manawara. And then I can imagine that on top of that, if it was the month of Ramadan, that a person, if had they gone to Makkah Makarama first, Khair, but I had gone to uh, Medina Manawara first. And truly, I mean, Ramadan in Haramain Sharifan is a very uh, special uh, experience. 
So this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has placed these things. You know, no religion has anything like the Kaaba. And no religion actually has their prophet or whoever they may idolize or follow, uh, their resting place preserved at a level of historical, absolute historical certainty. And where they can go and stand in front of their prophet or let's say it's some false religion, whoever their false leader is, uh, no, there's no other religion that has that. Just the existence of Makkah Makarama and Medina Manawara and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoining upon us this act of Umrah and the act of Ziyara, visiting Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's resting place, having these acts, these A'mal, these acts of worship in our deen is an incredible, incredible. For me itself is a proof of the Hakaniya, of the truth and veracity of the deen of Islam. And I think definitely in this month of Ramadan, all of us should make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take all of us there over and over again. And may Allah ta'ala accept the duas and ibadat that those fortunate, blessed, selected members of the ummah who are there this year, who th that they make. You know, Ramadan comes every year and some people are lucky enough that they go for Umrah or Hajj every year. But for most of us, it's more than a year gap when we go. Uh, definitely I would encourage those who can comfortably afford to do so along with uh, maintaining a reasonable level of charity for the poor and also obviously supporting whoever you know has rights over you that you support them uh, if still mashallah you can afford to go every year I would highly recommend to go every year and I think it's also very tragic how many people would fall in that definition that I just gave but they don't actually go every year and just like Ramadan comes every year for everyone uh, for those who have that means and istidat it would be wonderful for them were they to do Umrah every single year so what happens in these two acts so the act of Ramadan, we are staying away from food and drink and lawful relations for those who are in Nikah from Fajr to Maghrib. And in Umrah, during the state, during the act of Umrah, you are in a state of Ihram where you can't eat and drink, you do leave the third thing and you leave many other things as well. So there's a notion of sacrifice of your basic normal daily routine and requirements in both Ram the fasting in the month of Ramadan and certainly the major pillar of Hajj. What does this mean? This is a way, this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa that He has put two major pillars in our deen where we strip ourselves, we remove ourselves from all of this fluff and extraneous stuff that we have accumulated in our life and our mind and our hearts and our lifestyle and we go right down to the basic core and essence of our being and in that state so for ramadan in the state of hunger and thirst and in hajj in the state of in a sense the pilgrim is homeless in the state of temporarily homelessness in the state where your identity is all your other identities other than being an abd is removed and your only identity is that you're the Slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even on, that's true in, this, in, in, the hal, in the state of Ihram and Umrah for the Mu'tamir as well as the Haji. So these reducing us to our core states, it's a lesson for us from both of these pillars. That if you really want to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one beneficial way to do that is to forget yourself and to distance yourself from your own identities and preoccupations and worries and anxieties and go deep into the core of your basic humanity. You can, has nothing to do with, you do not need, need to be educated or erudite or intelligent or intellectual to fast Ramadan. And there's no role in education, in intellectual activity, in the act of tawaf and being on Umrah and being on Hajj. It's also a lesson. Right? Sometimes, you know, and, and, and we also, you know, all, all of us can be guilty of that who have, you know, for whatever reason, better or worse, acquired an education. Uh, you know, the Ramadan and Hajj and Salah 
and obviously our basic iman and the act of giving charity as zakat are core basic human activities that are not in any way dependent on or even amplified by any type of rationality, intellectualization, or education. So there was a teaching in our deen that tried to combine all of this, you know, and sort of realize the essence of what I'm saying, and that was called Zohd, which later, you know, was is, is a core feature of Tazkiyah, but it's a separate thing in of itself, Zohd. Sometimes in English it's translated as abstinence, sometimes it's translated as renunciation. What it really means is this simplicity. What it really means is shedding all false airs, affectations, tasanno, takalluf, shedding all of what outwardly appear to be your worldly achievements, your worldly accomplishments, your worldly identities, and trying, again, I use this word, to strip yourself to the bare essence of being an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And abd is used in three ways in the Qur'an al-Kareem. First and foremost, it's obviously used as the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's also used in, in the sense of the worshipful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's also used at its most basic fundamental sense as a creature, ibad, as a creature, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to strip oneself of everything except their ubudiyya, except their identity of being an abd, right? Because when you, you, some of you may have studied this, when often the ulama would teach and comment upon la ilaha illallah, and so if a person puts that in English, sometimes they get confused, they ask a question, because there is no God but God. But what is God? So they would say la ma'bud, ma'bud. There is no being worthy. What? is a ilah, is a being worthy of worship. So there is no being worthy of worship except for God. There is no being worthy of worship except for the one and only God, Allah. Right? So, if one of the major, major attributes of Allah subhanahu wa is his ma'budiyya, for us as humans to connect to that, we have to realize and be more focused and aware of our abdiyya and ubudiyya, the fact that we are an abd. And all of these pillars do that. So the pillar of salah, of Ramadan, of zakah, and hajj, all are focused on strengthening, and that is the foundation of our iman, is our identity and feeling as an abd, as a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Worshipful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of times our other identities cloud our perception and our feeling of this. This is this is the enjoyment that a person is supposed to feel in Ramadan when you fast. That I'm doing I'm just I just why am I leaving this food and drink just out of being a slave, just out of being an abd? Why am I waking up or falling in sujood? Just out of being a slave, that's a greater feeling to pray Salah, even more than praying out of my love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or praying to seek some feeling of spiritual ecstasy or, or, or authentic dhikr and qurb and, and remembrance and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest feeling inside all of these pillars of Islam, the greatest reason behind all of these pillars of Islam, the greatest purpose behind all of these pillars of Islam is to feel and become the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that heightened, imagine when you combine these things. So imagine the person who prays salah in the state of fasting, in the month of Ramadan, while in the state of ihram, while performing umrah in Makkah Mukarramah, right? That Umrah, which is like the Hajj in the Ma'iyyah, the companionship of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And anybody who has been blessed by Allah Ta'ala to experience that will understand what I'm talking about. That is a connection. That's a yaqeen that you get in your iman. The yaqeen that you will get in your iman when you try to really feel like an abd and you view Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as your ma'bud that is yakin that is greater than any series of courses or intellectual coursework can give you.
right? Because you see, when you're abd and Allah tells you ma'bud, and that's it, that's all you're thinking about, that's all in your awareness, then you, none of these questions arise. But why is there evil in the world? Why is there suffering in the world? None of this arises at that moment. When you're abd, you are in this nexus of you are abd and he is ma'bud. You are his abd, he is your ma'bud. You address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did it a couple of days ago in Fatah. Iyaka na'budu. Right? This iyaka na'budu. This part of Surah Al-Fatiha. This aspect of Salah. This is the essence of all of these pillars of Islam. And so sometimes I also feel that people focus a lot on the ibadat in the month of Ramadan. So I have to do these many acts of worship. That's important because that's a means. But the goal is what? The goal isn't just to tick off, fulfill certain numbers. right? Because unfortunately there's some people who have taken this very mathematical calculating approach to ibadah which is useful for a beginner useful to keep yourself in check useful for even a quote-unquote non-beginner those of us who are older uh, to keep ourselves in check to keep ourselves in track to keep ourselves motivated but remember the calculated number the quantity is not the purpose the goal the maksud the purpose and the goal is that feeling of being an abd and if you're racing through your recitation of Quran Karim without understanding it just because you wanted to finish so many ajza, so many paras for today or for the month, or if you're race, you know, trying to pray two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve nawafil because that's you, know, you just wanted to reach a certain number, or you're racing through some type of dhikr, kalima la ilaha illallah, tasbih, you know, istighfar, salawat, durud, just because you wanted to hit a hundred or a thousand or eleven thousand or a hundred thousand, then you get you won't get that feeling. And if you're in a state of Ramadan and you're fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maybe that particular day you didn't get the chance to do a lot of ibadah but in that state of hunger you're thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're happy. You're happy and joyous in that submission of your basic need to eat. You're happy to submit that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That submission and that joy in submission is the true hal or kaif or ecstasy of being the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is accessible to every human, every believer. You do not need some nisab of saluk or some particular asbaq of dhikr to get that. That is a myth that you need such things to get the reality of the spiritual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's another tragedy that a lot of very sincere people have been led astray in this. Uh, but you know Allah Ta'ala would have preserved them because their intentions were true but sometimes they end up end up you know leading others astray as well here so Ramadan and Hajj so let's get back to the Kaaba and so if you look at the structure of Baytullah the structure there's no more zuhud in architecture than the Kaaba right so an architectural design that is conveying absolute magnificence taqdis you know, I, I, I never liked this English word holy, but the, the, the holiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the magnificence, the splendor, the sublimity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that is being conveyed by the Kaaba through what? Through the most extremely simple of designs. The Kaaba itself is a lesson in what Zuhud is. Simply in Ramadan being in a state of fasting, just being, existing, being alive between Fajr and Maghrib in a state of hunger and thirst is a simple, basic, bare bones, essential, fundamental aspect of Zuhd that connects a person to feeling like the Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the act of Tawaf, if you think about it, it's very simple. There's no, right, so Salah is more complicated. You've got Qiyam, you've got Ruku, you've got Sujood, you've got the sittings, Right? Tawaf is just a simple movement, just a flow, just just walking, right? Just walking. There's no changes in the posture, just walking. And there's that beauty of walking in a circuit, like an orbit, like a circle, right? So it's not, you, you know, even Alhamdulillah, those of you who have been on Tawaf, you know this, it's not, if somebody asked you normally, you would think, right, that it's natural to walk in a straight line. And you'd kind of like driving a car, right? And you'd have to steer. 
and consciously be walking in a circle. But all of you know this who've done tawaf, alhamdulillah. When you're doing tawaf, you don't have to consciously steer yourself. In fact, at that moment of tawaf, the natural way of walking, the most zuhud way of walking. Why? Because actually, it's natural for us to gravitate towards the spiritual center of being an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's natural for us to gravitate to the Kaaba at that time when we're making tawaf. And that is also just symbolic and representative that it's natural for our hearts to be inclined towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just, as, just think like this, as easy as it was to walk in a curve in tawaf without consciously deliberately doing it, it is literally that easy for the heart of a human being to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need any fancy teachings and fancy... It's that easy. That's how easy it is. Allah Akbar. The act of fasting is extremely easy. You just have to abstain. Right? That's another... Maybe that can be another good way for... Maybe I, I said that already, but for Zohad, abstinence. So the Zohad of Ramadan, the Zohad of the Kaaba, the Zohad of the Ibadah, this particular Ibadah, Tawaf and Sa'i, right? That is performed at the Kaaba. Now let's move to Medina Manawara. Now, let's just forget for the moment the fancy Ottoman Turkish and then Ottoman Turkish slash Ottoman and then so many Saudi expansions. But if you were to, you know, go, think historically, the Rodha of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam is actually the Hujra where he used to live with Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. Means this is it's like the living quarters of Rasulullah sallallahu You can't even call it a house. You couldn't even call it an apartment. I'm trying to use an English word living quarters to show you the simplicity of it. It's a room. It's a hujra, right? The simplicity of that room in which Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu spent his life and is also now spending his resting period of his life the sheer simplicity, again, don't think of all the, uh, and you know, mashallah, they did that with a lot of love, the Turks and the Ottomans and then the Saudis, etc. But just think back historically, it, extremely simple. But Allahu Akbar Kabira, and, and that's why I want to be clear, the beauty and power, so just like you know, the beauty and the power of the Kaaba is not coming from the ghlaf or the gold thread that is used in the kiswa, right? And the, and the what do you call it, the shroud, Right? No, just like that, the, the, the beauty and the taqdis, the holiness and the wonder and the majestic, sublime lutf and fazl and karam at the roda is completely simple. Simply that Sayyidina Rasulullah is resting there. That's it. It's a very simple thing. You don't need high level intellectual knowledge of kalam and you don't need any of that, right? He is your Nabi and you are his Ummati. You have come and he is there and you want to say to him, I am here. That's it. Any human being can understand it. Any human being can understand it. And it's, 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 it's a perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blessed and graced this Ummah through his infinite fazl and karam that he left Sayyidina Rasulullah with us. So he lifted Isa salam up to him and he has left Sayyidina Rasulullah with us. He's with us on earth. And, and you'll feel it more when you're in Medina Manawra, standing at the Rodha, but he, he's with us. Alhamdulillah. And so, you know, in other talks, we've talked more about, the uh, you know, about Tawaf and about saying Salam at the Rosa to say Na Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but this is you know uh, an incredible aspect of our deen incredible aspect of our deen so in this month of Ramadan we should try to improve even though we may not be physically able to go on this Umrah and Ziyara in this month but the lessons of Hajj the lessons of Ziyara the lessons of Makkah Makarama the lessons of Medina Manawara, I thought it would be good if we tried to remind ourselves of them, remember them, reflect upon them, and make that part of our du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Make that part of our du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. 
May Allah Ta'ala accept this month of fasting from each and every one of us. May Allah Ta'ala accept the month of fasting from the entire Ummah. May Allah Ta'ala accept our standing in Qiyam, in Salah. May Allah Ta'ala help us and guide us. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illa Allah wa Allahu akbar. Subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al-azim. Rabbana atana fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhaab al-nar. Rabbana adhalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa talhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Rabbi gfir wa arham wa anta khair rahimin. Ya Allah, you are Rabb of the Kaaba. You are Rabb al-Nas. You are Rabb al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are Rabb al-Haramain al-Sharifain. You are Rabb al-Bayt al-Makandas ya Rabbi Kareem. And anta Rabbuna, you are your Rabb. Anta Rabbi, you are my Rabb. Ya Rabbi Kareem, ana amduk, I am your amd. Nahnu ibaduk, we are your ibad. Ya Rabbi Kareem, ya Allah, make this the first and foremost feeling in our heart. Make this the first and foremost identity in our mind. Ya Allah, we want to be nothing more and nothing less than your Abd. To be your Abd is everything to us. Ya Rabbi Kareem, for so much of our life, we were so caught in so many other aspirations, trying to be something, trying to be everything, trying to be something something for someone, everything for everyone. Ya Rabbi Kareem, now we want to be nothing for no one. We want to only be an abd to you, an abd for you. We want to be your abd, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Ya Rabbi, make us from your ibad salihin Make us from your virtuous, pious, righteous servants and slaves. Ya Allah, we are so honored to be your creatures in your creation. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are ma'bud. Give us always the feeling of abdiya. Give us always the feeling of ubudiya. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask that you guide us and bless us and enable us to take all the lessons of Hajj and Umrah, all of the barakat and fuzat and blessings of Makkah Makarimah, Kaaba Sharif, Medina Manawara, Rosa Sharif into our hearts and our lives in this moment. You are Arham al Rahimin, you are Dhufad al Adim, you are Dhufad al Mu'minin. Send upon all of us all of that barakah, send upon all of the rahmah and barakah and hidayah that you have placed and established in Makkah Makarimah, in the Kaaba, in these acts of Hajj and Umrah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let us focus more on our Salah. Let us experience more in our Salah. Let us experience the feeling and sweetness of simply being your Abd in our Salah. Grant us the Salah of an Abd, the Psalm of an Abd, the Akhlaq and character of an Abd. Let us fulfill and honor our interrelations with an Mu'amalat like an Abd. Let us play roles in Mu'ashir in society like an Abd. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let us have compassion for the poor and needy and give zikr like your Abd Ya Rabbi Kareem this is what we need from this month of Ramadan we need to become from your Muttaki Ibad your Salihin Ibad Ya Rabbi Kareem we were our nafs had gotten mastery over us. Time had gotten mastery over us. People had gained mastery over us. Or we had just allowed ourselves to become servants and slaves to our own desires, to our own wishes, to our own laziness. In a big, we want to leave every such false slavery. We want to become firmly upon the true slavery to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, take away all of the false concepts from our mind, the false feelings from our heart, put the true feelings of Tawheed in our heart, put the true feelings of love for you, love for Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, love for Quran, love for Deen Islam, love for the Sahaba, love for the Siddiqeen, Shuhada and Salihin, love for all of our Mu'mineen, compassion for all of Nas and Insan, put all of that in our heart, and in Bikrim, remove all the bad feelings from our heart, the negative feelings from our heart, the malice and spite and hatred, the envy and jealousy, the unlawful lust and unlawful anger, yet in Bikrim, the unlawful pride and vanity and conceit, yet in Bikrim, grant us the humility of an Abd, grant us the character of an Abd, grant us the virtues of an Abd, grant us the feelings of an Abd, yet in Bikrim, in the same way that you blessed and guided Sahaba Kiram and the Muttaqeen of the Tabeen and Taba Tabeen to become your Ibad, your Ibad as Salihin, Ya Rabbi Kareem, send your Hidayah on us as well. Guide us on this Rat al Mustaqeem. Ya Rabbi Kareem, make us from your Ibad as Salihin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we make dua for the whole Ummah, Ya Rabb, the Muslimin of the Ummah, the Mutaathirin of the Ummah, the poor and needy of the Ummah, the oppressed and downtrodden of the Ummah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, send your special Rahmah upon them. Send your Kudrat against the Zulm of the Zalim. Send your Nusrat on the, to help the 
Muslimin and Bikrim and raise again from this Ummah those who will repel the injustice of the unjust, those who will rescue the oppressed from oppression. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask that you accept all the du'as of all of the friends and all of the families and all of the Ummah, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Rabbana takabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim wa tubu alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Amen.